Hi everybody, this is Anne. I wanted to take a moment today to just <clears throat> do a quick video with, for you on uh, working with Depth of Field within Dev Studio. Um, I know we get a lot of questions on it and I know there are a lot of different videos but I just thought that I would show like the process I use to work with depth of field especially like in tight spaces or when you have real specific areas that you're trying to get stuff like that um, so without further delay let's just get into it here <laughs> okay so here's dad's studio I loaded up our control room just because it was a prop I'm familiar with and I know where everything's at um, right now I just got spotlight control room um, I'm in perspective view and I'm in texture shaded mode just so I can kind of see what's going on. Um, usually what I do first is just kind of line stuff up in perspective view before I do anything else. So I had kind of already done that. But just to kind of give you an idea with this model, one of the reasons I picked it is because if you back up, you're kind of in the wall, pull forward. There's not a lot of give within this as far as that goes so I thought it would give me the opportunity to show a couple different things with the cameras um, so the first thing we're gonna do is load a camera in this case I'm just gonna apply the active viewport transformations and hit accept now we're gonna switch to that camera I'm just doing that now we're on that camera um, in this case, the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to, one, point out how to bring up the camera pane in case you don't have it up for some reason. If you get a window, panes, cameras, it's going to pop it up. You can drag and drop it around, put it where you want it. Just got to click and hold the little tab right there. Um, now that we have a camera and we're looking through it, I'm going to go to Window and Viewports and Side by Side. Usually what I do is on the left here, I will usually have it in iRay Preview Mode, but so that this moves faster for video purposes, I'm not doing that right now. Um, but usually I have the left in iRay Preview. You can do it in Texture Shaded, which is what I'm doing here. Um, and then in this view, I do Top View and then I go into lit wireframe. Now what you're going to be able to do is actually see your camera which we have selected right now and you're going to be able to see kind of the focal distance and kind of where it's pointed and all that good stuff from the top um, the first thing we want to do is turn on depth of field. Now you're going to notice some extra planes kind of added in there. You've got this forward plane and this back plane. Um, to make this easier, I'm going to go to display while still being on the camera and go to depth of field plane color or DOF plane color. And I'm going to pick orange because I figured out earlier that that shows up pretty decent. <laughs> <coughs> And so now you're going to see two planes in orange. There's a forward and a back plane. Anything that's in front of the forward plane, so between the camera and this plane, is going to be blurred and it's going to gradually get blurrier the closer it gets to the camera from this plane. Anything behind this plane is the same. It's going to kind of have a fall off and it's going to get blurry and blurrier the further away from this plane. And anything that's in between these two planes is what's going to be clear. The clearest area being usually right where this crosshair is. I don't know how well you can see that. Hopefully you can see it. Um, I could probably zoom into it though. But this crosshair right here is going to be the clearest area. So first what we have to do is we have to decide what we want to be blurry and what we want to have clear or in better terms how we want the depth of field to be presented so 
in this case we're going to start out focusing on these front three monitors which are these right here um, so we're going to go to camera and we're going to move the focal distance and you're going to see right now these planes are moving but if you notice in the other window in the the left view the camera is not moving um, this is one of the reasons I like to work this way because you can see real easy what's going on and you can see if you accidentally move the camera because <laughs> I've done that um, but so if we want these three panels to be clear then line up kind of the crosshairs with this middle one and then you want to adjust the f-stop which is going to separate those two planes the higher up you go with the f-stop the more and more separated they're going to get so if you want kind of just these three monitors to be real clear then you want to keep it kind of right in here so things back here are going to be blurred things back here are going to be blurred the stuff forward is not going to be real blurry just a little the stuff back this way as you get further and further back is going to get more and more blurry so right now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch this into NVIDIA iRay mode just to show you what it's doing and I'm going to pause for a second because that usually takes time so bear with me I'll be right back okay so that is all done now and since the window is kind of being shared here we're going to go back to single view so you can see it better now hopefully what you're going to notice is that these areas up here seem fairly clear back here it's getting more and more blurry the star field way in the back is pretty blurry the monitors are kind of blurred all of this is blurred and the closer forward we're getting up here the clearer the view which is what we wanted um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to split screen again and this time we're gonna change what our focus is and I think I'm gonna focus back here instead so I'm just going to reset this to make my life easier. And I think maybe I'll reset this too. And then we're going to move this back this way. And I think we're going to pull it together a little more. Eh, maybe a little, a little more forward. Okay, now what you're going to see, if I go back to single view again, is the monitors up here are extremely blurry now, and the stuff back here is actually clear. And excuse me, because I know it's probably pixelated and all that, just because the video recording software and the viewport renderer and stuff are all kind of sharing some stuff right now. Now obviously this space field back here is still very blurry. It's pretty much just these monitors that are clear. This is blurred. This is a little blurred. But that's pretty much how we set that up. So that's actually kind of perfect. If this is the panel that we wanted. Um, the next thing to consider is, okay, right now, I don't have a great view in here. It's real cramped. I can't see much. There's a bunch of stuff in the scene that right now we can't see. Like the camera is showing what's in between these two orange dotted line sections basically all the way back into infinity. Um, obviously you've got a bunch of computer stuff over here or I guess those are what mon well there's a technical term for this what those are CRT monitor thingy I don't know anyways there's a, <laughs> there's a bunch of um, 
displays and stuff over here that we're not seeing. There's kind of stuff up here we're not seeing. And everything is really, really tight. Obviously, as I said before, if I scooch the camera back, we're going to be in the wall, which wouldn't be real useful. So, in order to get more of this view, that is when you implement perspective and you put the frame width. So, if you adjust the frame width, you're going to see that the, the more I pull back here, I'm getting more and more of this in my view now. And you'll also notice what I'm not doing is ending up in that wall because the camera itself, which is here, is not actually moving into this. All that's happening is it's extending the width of the view. Now, in this specific case, that's probably a little too distancey. I probably wouldn't quite do it like that, and I'd probably change my angle just a little. So let's maybe whip this around a bit. And we'll pull it forward just a little. Get it out of this piece right here. And we'll try adjusting it maybe a little more. Okay, so now you can see we've got a lot more of this control room into my view. Um, from here, we could play with depth of field some more. You're also going to notice that, you know, our focus which was these back monitors, hasn't actually changed. Like back in here is still what we're seeing the most of. This is still blurry. Back here is clear. Way back there is really blurry. Um, say I wanted to focus back on this front area again. I'm going to go ahead and reset these two again just because I find sometimes starting from kind of where it starts is easier. But so first we're going to pull these way up here. Now, at the moment, my view is literally like this one monitor, kind of right, well, kind of right in between these two. Yeah, right in between these two. Um, we're going to adjust the f-stop to extend that out some more. Maybe not that much. Maybe about there. Now we're back to where the back is kind of faded out. And all of this stuff is sort of clear. Same with this. Um, obviously, like I mentioned, the further away from this back, back pain that you get, the blurrier and blurrier and blurrier it's going to get. So this stuff's going to be clearer, even though it's not within these two orange squares, than like this stuff back here or the planes that are back here. Um, sometimes you'll find that like maybe it's too clear. Like you wanted the blurring to be more. In that case, just kind of close the stuff in more and kind of check it. If for some reason you can't do the split screen like this because I find that if you can do it this way it's nice to be able to see kind of the results but um, if you can't then you can either kind of set it up and then go into IRA preview mode real quick just to double check it or you can um, just do a spot render just hit that and kind of pick a section that shows like all the different areas that you're trying to look at. So if you want to see like kind of how clear all these sections are, like front, middle, back, then do like a spot render of like a section like this that shows all three of those areas so you can kind of get an idea. Um, Pull in a little more, actually. And I think we might even pull it forward some more.
Okay, this is me just playing, not paying attention. Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, this should give you, in theory, an idea of how to overcome, like when you do have walls in your way, or when there is an obstacle, or if you're trying to get the focal area to be kind of specific, like I want this, or I want this, or I want this how to kind of control those things. Um, I think that covers everything I want to cover. I can't think of anything else. Um, so I think I'm going to end the video here. If you have any questions, please let you know, let me know, let you know. Oh, yo, yo. If you have any questions, please let me know. <laughs> And I will gladly answer them for you or do another video if there's something that maybe I left out that you wanted to know. Um, thanks for watching and have a good day. <laughs>